Reining the mind in, however, is very much like strengthening um, a muscle. If we are going to um, lift weights and we're new to lifting weights, we wouldn't begin with a very heavy one. We would probably start with a, a lighter weight and begin to build the capacity and the strength. And if we were an endurance trainer and we were running a marathon, we certainly wouldn't start off with 20 miles right at the start. We would slowly take it over time. And so the capacity to have endurance, the ability to have strength, um, also is required in the inner practices of yoga because learning to rein the mind in and find quiet stillness and learning how to subdue the restlessness of the mind is yet another mental strength that um, we build over time. And these two inner practices, pranayama allows for the slowing of the breathing and as we slow our breath, we're almost downshifting, if you could, the pace within ourselves so that the respiratory rate lowers, the heart rate lowers, and this relaxation response that gets activated in the body is known as the parasympathetic nervous system. Here, the body becomes relaxed and healing begins to take place. At all other times when the mind is turned outward and there are reactions and stress and chaos, a very different component of the nervous system known as the fight or flight, but the part of our nervous system that allows for us to have quick responses and um, fills the body with adrenaline and creates a rapid heart rate is really the epidemic of stress. And what happens is that if it becomes habitual and becomes a way of being, the body has lost its way to know how to find that relaxation response naturally. So yoga gives us these wonderful tools that help us return back to a healthy nervous system so that we can actually um, combat the stress in our lives and learn how to downshift and quiet ourselves so that the mind is able to focus on yet other things that lead us to the most inner practices of yoga.